This presentation is to demonstrate the forensic analysis performed on an officer-involved shooting incident that occurred at approximately 9.45 p.m. on February 26, 2015 on the 2800 block of Folsom Street in San Francisco, California, resulting in the death of Amakar Perez Lopez. Our goal in this analysis is to attempt to determine whether the forensic analysis supports or contradicts the statements of the events provided by the officers involved in this shooting. In order to answer this question, we analyze all relevant data available to us in regards to this OIS, which includes seen photographs taken just moments after the shooting, the actual shot spotter audio, which recorded the shooting incident, the medical examiner's report, time, speed, motion analysis formed in our lab, human perception and reaction time studies, the report of use of force expert Charles J. Key Sr., statements made by both officers and witnesses involved in this OIS, and finally, SFPD's CSI report. In their statements, the officers state that they pulled up in the unmarked police vehicle and see Abraham P. and Mr. Perez Lopez separated by a parked vehicle. Officer Rebelly approaches Abraham P. while Officer Tiffy approaches Mr. Perez Lopez. At this point, neither officer has confirmed which suspect has the knife. The next slide will show you the results of our analysis focusing on the forensic evidence and how it relates to the officer's statements. Take note that the animation is taken in our time distance analysis from our lab testing and the shot sparta audio. Let us now take a moment to break down this animation and discuss each section and how it relates to not only the physical evidence but also the officer's statements. The location of both officers and the suspect in this animation are supported by the officer's statement, which was that Officer Tiffy was interacting with Mr. Perez Lopez while Officer Rebelly was with Abraham P. in the street. No physical evidence contradicts the analysis. At this point, Officer Tiffy states that when Mr. Perez Lopez ignores his commands to move away from the car, he attempts to grab Mr. Perez Lopez and get him to the ground. This analysis is based upon the statements of both officers, as well as the statements of Abraham P., the statement of Mr. Perez Lopez's roommate, David D., and the statement of the neighbor in the house across the street. No physical evidence contradicts this analysis. Officer Rebelly states that he sees Officer Tiffy and Mr. Perez Lopez engage in a violent struggle. So he leaves Abraham P. in the street and runs onto the sidewalk to back up his partner. This analysis is also supported by the statement of Mr. Perez Lopez's roommate, Delfino V., who said he saw one officer approach Mr. Perez Lopez from behind and the other come around onto the sidewalk, position himself facing 25th Street. No physical evidence contradicts this statement. Once both officers are on the sidewalk, their statements place Officer Rebelly northeast of Mr. Perez Lopez, while Officer Tiffy is next to Mr. Perez Lopez, two feet from the parked car. Officer Rebelly states that as he gets within five or six feet from where Officer Tiffy is engaged with Mr. Perez Lopez, he sees Officer Tiffy lunge backwards and also sees a flash of a very large silver knife, causing him to think that Officer Tiffy may have been stabbed. This analysis is supported by the statements of Officer Tiffy, who says that as he's trying to force Mr. Perez Lopez to the ground, when Mr. Perez Lopez lunges up at him with his right hand, causing Officer Tiffy to push away to gain distance, at which point Officer Tiffy sees Mr. Perez Lopez swipe at his chest with a very large knife. No physical evidence contradicts this statement. Both officers state that at this point, Mr. Perez Lopez turns and moves in the direction of Officer Rebelly. Abraham P. also states that he sees Mr. Perez Lopez turn and start to run in his direction, causing him to run to the driver's side of the parked car. Officer Rebelly states that he sees Mr. Perez Lopez run towards him with a knife in his hand, which is causing him to take one or two large steps back while reaching for his firearm. Based upon the motion analysis, the time it takes to run towards the officer would be roughly equal to the time the officer would need to unholster his firearm. Officer Rebelly states, that as he pulls out his firearm and shouts at Mr. Perez Lopez to drop the knife, Mr. Perez Lopez momentarily stops, looks back and forth between him and Officer Tiffy while making slashing motions with his knife at both officers, and then continues to advance towards Officer Rebelly. Officer Tiffy states that he pulls his firearm out when he sees Mr. Perez Lopez take a step towards Officer Rebelly. 
and he too yells for Mr. Perez Lopez to drop the knife as he watches the knife flailing in the air. This analysis is also supported by the statements of several witnesses who hear the shouts of, Drop the knife! before hearing the shots fired. This is also supported by the shot spotter audio, which captures the sound of shouting before the sound of gunfire. No physical evidence contradicts this statement. Officer Rebelli states that as Mr. Perez Lopez advances towards him, he again sees the flash of the knife, and at this moment fears for his life, for the life of his partner, who he thinks may have already been stabbed, and for the life of Abraham P., who he believes is still in very close proximity, so he discharges his firearm. At this point, we have a statement from Officer Rebelli that, as he's firing his weapon, he sees a turning movement towards the street by Mr. Perez Lopez. The physical evidence from the medical examiner's reports let us know that Mr. Perez Lopez's body had to be approximately halfway turned towards Officer Rebelli and halfway turned towards the street for the first shot to go through the back of the arm, but also graze the front chest just below the right nipple. This physical evidence supports the officer's statements that Mr. Perez Lopez had headed towards Officer Rebelli and that as Officer Rebelli began to fire, Mr. Perez Lopez turned away from him and headed towards the street. No physical evidence contradicts this statement. Both officers state that Mr. Perez Lopez was still holding on to the knife as he steps off the curb and enters the space between the two parked cars. Officer Tiffy states that he sees Mr. Perez Lopez focus on something southbound in the street, causing him to think that Mr. Perez Lopez is heading towards Abraham P., who Officer Tiffy believes is close by. Officer Tiffy states he fires once to stop Mr. Perez Lopez from reaching and stabbing Abraham P. This analysis is supported by the statements of Abraham P., who says that he is near the driver's side door of the parked blue car when he sees Mr. Perez Lopez step into the street while holding a knife above his head. This analysis is also supported by the physical evidence of the location of where Mr. Perez Lopez's body and the knife are found, shown here in the photograph taken at the scene and matched in the animation. He will demonstrate how there is a delayed reaction between perceiving danger and then reacting to the danger we just perceived, better known as perception reaction time. We will effectively illustrate how even though Mr. Perez Lopez was already turned away from Officer Reveille, when the shots were fired, from Officer Rebelli's perspective, he's reacting to the danger he's perceived one to two seconds earlier, which is represented by this gray figure in the following animation. As stated earlier, the perception and then reaction to danger takes one to two seconds. This means that your reaction to an event will always be one to two seconds late. For Officer Rebelli, even though Mr. Perez Lopez has turned away from him, he is still reacting to what Mr. Perez Lopez was doing one to two seconds earlier, which was coming towards him with a knife. Let's watch this again, and again notice the time, speed, and final location of where the evidence was found. This animation not only matches the physical evidence, but also matches the statements made by both police officers. As stated at the start of this presentation, our goal in this analysis was to attempt to determine whether the forensic analysis supports or contradicts the statements of the events provided by the police officers involved in this shooting. Our conclusion is that the officer's statements are supported by the forensic analysis performed on this incident. The time, speed, distance analysis not only supports the statements made by the police officers, but matches the forensic evidence, the medical examiner's report, scene photographs, ballistic analysis, and the shots part of audio.